Hello, internet. Long time no see. Um, sorry for a lack of updates lately. The past month was pretty busy for me, particularly with the opening of my online store. So, um, for those of you who want a copy of my posters or my original art book, hint, hint, um, that'll be <laughs> available for you now. The link will be in the description. So, anyways, um, I'm coming back strong with a much requested video on how I color hair. Um, to start off, I figured I'll make a video first on how to cell shade, since I use a lot of um, cell shading techniques and it'll be much easier for those of you beginners out there watching to understand. And so for those of you who don't know where it is, Google define it as um, like cell shading, which is often misspelled, um, is a non type of non-photorealistic rendering that basically makes things look less 3D and more flat by using less shading color instead of shading gradients or tints. Um, so obviously it's not meant to be super complex or 3D, but personally I really like the look of cell shading on hair specifically and it's also used by a lot of anime artists that you see out there. So yeah, let's begin. Um, first you have to do the lines and I highly suggest you guys to watch my tutorials on how to draw hair in the first place as well as how to make li nice line arts. Uh, click here if you're interested, it'll also be linked below, but anyways, <laughs> no self advertising. Um, what you do is then you add a base color somewhere underneath the line art layer and your prerequisites are set. So um, to begin, I lock the opacity of the base color layer and then I select the base color itself as a reference. Now, using an airbrush set at roughly 75% density, uh, I airbrushed on a darker color at the bottom, and then a lighter color on top. Uh, what this do is it creates kind of a nice gradient for us to work on top of. Now, I really don't advocate the use of effect layers on site, just because you're really cheating yourself out of learning how shading actually works. Um, but I'm a little hypocritical uh, when it comes to cell shading here because I use these layers religiously. So uh, what are effect layers? Basically you make a layer on top of the base color one and then go to the bar on top of here where all your layers are and select uh, mode. So for shading, we'll be using the mode multiply. So anyways, uh, we'll be coming back to this area again for a little trick I like to use, but uh, for now clip the layer by checking this box here and this makes it so that everything you draw on this layer remains on the boundary of the layer below and yeah. I usually use a brush to shade my hair. Um, I don't have a set brush setting because I play around with these three down here all the time, but um, as long as you keep blending dilution and persistence in the lower end of the bars and keep the brush shape as um, I think it was called edge shape. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you should be fine. Now, uh, select the base color again and play with the color wheel until you get a slightly darker color that you think will look nice as a shade. And remember that with the effect layer, it will be slightly darker. But anyways, yeah, now we're good to go. Uh, using the brush with the same techniques that I mentioned in my how to draw hair tutorial, uh, start with the root up top. It's really important that you actually follow your line art. Um, sounds kind of like common sense, but um, I used to just kind of randomly make strokes and while it doesn't look too bad, um, it's just overall really messy and kind of ugly. And I mean the line arts are there for a reason. But yeah, uh, when you shade the hair, it's good to pinpoint first where the light's coming from. So in this case, I think I'll make the light come from the upper left corner. Uh, so right away, you should think about where the shades will be. So if the light is coming this way, then there'll be a lot of shade on the right side over here. Also remember that for a lot of hairstyles, uh, there's a back and there's a front. And the back area should always be shaded. So um, in this case, it'll be the area behind her front bangs and around her neck. A good um, like golden rule <laughs> to go by is whenever there's a line, there should be shade on the side opposite of where the light is coming from. So I'll give you guys some examples. Uh, knowing that the light's coming from the left, most of the shades should be on the right side of the hair. Like so and so. Um, see how it's kind of the shading's on the right side of the line of her hair. But <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. 
But yeah, um, then you just repeat this over the entire hair. Another good golden rule to go by is um, when two lines touch, make a crest slash curvy triangle. I don't know how to describe it uh, with your shade, or just I guess add more shade to that area in general. Um, I'll just show you guys because it really is hard to explain. Um, I mean, there's no name for this, but yeah. Obviously, these rules aren't obsolete. They're just little tricks, and you don't always have to follow it. And like, really, they shouldn't be called rules at all. But anyways, um, just make sure you guys also play with the brush size while you're shading too. And don't forget to also add some shades in the middle of the hair if there's like a large empty block, so it doesn't look, you know, too empty. So hopefully you guys got the gist of what I'm talking about. Um, now that's done. Doesn't it look a little, should I say, edgy to me, you guys? <laughs> well, it does to me. And so this is the fun part. Uh, make a watercolor brush on side and turn the dilution and persistent all the way up to 100. And ta-da, that's your blending brush. So using this, um, blend away the hard edges, which by that, I mean, I guess, where you begin the shade and the ends of it. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, the amazing thing about this trick is that even if your initial shading looks messy or bad, as long as you blend moderately, it usually turns out pretty good in the end. Um, a common mistake people make is blending too much. I am guilty of it in my older days. <laughs> Remember that we do still want some edge to these shades for it to look clean and cell shaded. But ta-da, now that we're pretty much done, um, in fact, by definition, we should probably stop here and the self shading is done, but I'm going to teach you guys my ultimate secret technique. <laughs> but no, just kidding. It's actually not that secretive. Um, a lot of artists use it low. But yeah, anyways, um, going back to this area above all your layers, see how there's a section above mode that says effect. So click and select fringe. Oh. I guess I need to turn it up a bit here. But anyways, so <laughs> the magic of this is that um, it makes, I guess, kind of a line outside of your colors, which makes it look cleaner and sharper. And you can adjust how noticeable slash thick the line is by adjusting the width. And that does help a lot to add thing a little bit more edginess, I guess, to your art. But yeah, to me, this still looks a little unfinished. So now we make another effect layer on top of this one. Uh, clip it and repeat the progress all over again. Remember that with the second layer, the point is to enhance the shading. That's already there. So just add to the places that you think should be darker and really blend it out. So now we're done! <laughs> For the second shading layer, I usually don't use the fringe technique just because then it becomes a little too much. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it for how I cell shade hair. Uh, next time I'll be showing you guys the steps I take after this and basically how I color my hair, my style I guess. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, make sure to click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Uh, if you guys aren't fans of Danganronpa, feel free to check out my Celestia speed paint and my Komaeda speed paint, which will be coming out soon. Um, yeah, or I guess click here to watch some of my other tutorials, and I'll see you guys next time.